Hey, Mike. Hello. David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Started to get some guys back today, uh, Land and, and Cooks, and uh, also Neyland. Were you able, what were you able to tell from what they were able to do? Well, we were in a walkthrough, so they, they were able to participate in that. So it was, it was great to have them back out there. And the other side of that is, now that you've done some more tests on Zach Martin, do you have a better feel for kind of what he's dealing with? Um, I, I, he was in the uh, rehab group today, so I mean, it's, it's, it's a long week, but he's got a couple things he's, he's dealing with. Clarence Hill, City, Dallas. You know, working with Dan Quinn the last three years, what can you learn from him to take from this game, and what can you learn from you? Can you talk about the chess match of going against a guy that worked under you? Well, I think the big thing with Dan is, you know, what he stands for, um, you know, as a coach, um, you know, in big picture, uh, the culture um, that I'm sure he's created there. Uh, but schematically, and just the way they play, uh, that, that's that's you know that, that's what we're, we've really been studying the, the last two weeks. Um, you see a lot of similarities schematically to to, to Dan's time here. Uh, I think Joe Witt's done a really a really good job of you know putting his his variation onto it and and how he, he's calling it is, is is a little different than the way uh, naturally, which which is normal, uh, different to, than the way Dan called it. That definitely fits Joe's personality. You know, Joe and I. Uh, we're together what 12 years, uh, so um, I, I think it's when, when I watch them play, um, you know, I, I definitely see you know J Joe's influence on on how he likes to play the game. Uh, you know, offensively, I, I think you know Dan going with Cliff was a was an excellent choice because you know Cliff does a great job uh, schematically challenging you. Uh, their teams play the right way, so uh, it's a team that's, uh, that's that's playing really good football. Uh, you know, they're doing a good job taking care of the ball, taking it away. You know, things like that. So, um, you know, they're having a good year. Elaborate on, on what Joe does different from Dan that you see on film that, that you know from the past. You're gonna have to watch the game, Clarence. <laughs> Not what you're gonna do. This is what they do. I'm just saying. Hey, maybe for the first time in my time here in the history. Of my tenure, that we'll just try to keep it on the wraps for one day. Okay. So, <laughs> Jerry's on the radio tomorrow. <laughs> okay, twelve uh, hours. So. <laughs> I'm Mike Tarch with ESPN. When you, when you have these short weeks condensed, a couple weeks here, when you get to the walkthrough process, is it um, as involved as a normal walkthrough that you guys have, like we, the, what we see in training camp and things, or is it? Or is it more more things that you do? I'd say it's similar to I mean similar to training camp on I would think the way you would view it. Um, I'll, I'll say this: I, the walkthroughs, not just in my time here, and I think frankly since the pandemic, um, probably even started before that with the CBA changes, uh, the intensity, uh, the specificness, uh, the detail in the walkthroughs. Uh, have greatly improved. Um, it just you know now I'm talking you know from years and years ago um, because you know you have to walk through so much more in today's game, 17 game season. Um, you know being a team that plays on Thanksgiving every year, so you get you get this stretch of you know three games and you know uh, in a short period of time. Uh, so all the, all those things apply. So and, and the point I'm trying to make is I, I think our guys do a really good job of really locking into the details. Uh, of, of the walkthroughs, it's not a stepping point, and I got that guy, you know, type deal. It's you know, it's, it's there's footwork being coached. There's you know, there's specifics of the motion landmarks. You know, the reaction. I think our look teams, uh, especially the group that we have, you know, with our coaches um, on 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 you know our offense versus that look team defense. So the the involvement in the intensity of it as. Has has been really good, so I actually feel I feel very confident when we have to go through a, a practice like this. Now it took me, you know, it was new for me to be in this mode every year, uh, playing. You know, because you know, first couple of years we had the Thursday Thursday too. So, uh, but to be in this format uh, has has really helped us, and I think it really helps you take care of the of the health of your football team for the longevity of the season. And we've been able to carry that over into our training camp training, and I think it's it's helped us improve in, in that space too. Uh, because of the 12-hour rule, the 11-hour rule that you have um, in training camp, so you know walkthroughs are, are critical, and in, in the in the involvement, how you do them, uh, the number of reps that you do, and so uh, you have to, you know, it's a big part of how we train. We talked to Brandon Cooks today, and he said he, um, he he wants to see guys more joyful through the process, and hopes his return can kind of help with that a little bit. Uh, what is it about his personality or makeup? Do you think that can that, that brings that energy. 
Well, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, you know, it comes to him very natural. I mean, Brandon brings a lot of joy uh, to whatever space he's in. He, he just has that type of magnetic uh, personality. Uh, he, he's a joy to work with. Um, he, he loves the process. Um, the thing that I've always enjoyed about Brandon is the number of different experiences that he that he's had, um, the number of places he's worked, and how open he is. And you talk about a man that pays it forward, both, both personally and professionally. He's an incredible example of that. So, um, but yes, he he he. he it's, def, it's it's great to have him. I mean, he's been here, but to have him out on the field today, I mean, you definitely feel his presence. Uh, John Machado with the Athletic. Um, Dante Fowler, Dorrance Armstrong left here, go there. You guys obviously thought that, you know, Neyland and Sam Williams were replaced in, the, the, in those two spots, but how tough has it been to uh, really replace what, what you lost without those two guys? Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't look at it that way. I mean, you know, those guys went with a, with an opportunity, you know, that they they felt they needed to do, and they, every everybody's situation is different. I mean, I'm proud of those guys. They're playing very well. Dante's, you know, off the charts. Da is so damn consistent, you know, in the way he's played. So yeah, I mean, just the, you know, the, the the video I've seen of them. So I've been very impressed. Uh, but that, that's that's how this game works. Uh, you know, the financial component. Uh, it changes your team every year. I mean, that's why this this is always such a challenge. It you know changes the dynamic. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm happy that they've they got a great opportunity, and I hope they play like shit Sunday. So. <laughs> Nick, Nick Harris, former Star Telegram. I'm sure it's been a frustrating process for Deron Bland, but how have you kind of seen him go through the process, and how important will it be getting him back on the field? Yeah, Deron. I mean, I think he's uh, you know. Gosh, you know, we miss him, number one, you know, and it'd be great to get him back out there. But this is, you know, this has been a, a tough return to play for him. So um, just hopeful that he can cross that threshold. And, and today was a big day to have him out there. But yeah, he's, uh, you know, every injury is different. Um, and, you know, and, and he, you know, and he's the type of, you know, he's going to do whatever he can to get out there. So um, you know, I'm just hopeful he can complete the process. And on the broadcast from Sunday, we saw Dak up in the booth. How has he been able to kind of help in games? Um, you know, the biggest thing with Dak is just really having him there for support, and, and he's, um, you know, he sees things just like, you know, all quarterbacks, and especially you look at the wealth of knowledge that he has through experience. Uh, so, um, it, it's great to have another set of eyes up there. You know, I just, you know, just, you know, you want him to always be involved. You know, in, in my view, he's still the, the face of the locker room. You know, and it's, it, and it's, and it's, a, you know, it's a commitment that he takes a lot of pride in, and, and uh, you know, he still goes to the meetings. He's starting his rehab process in a limited basis that he can. So, I mean, he was here today, so he, he's still putting in the time. Tom. Like uh, yesterday, John was pretty down when I asked about Marquis Bell. Is there any update about his status? Yes, um, you, you know he's going to have surgery, you know, in, in the near future. So, um, and uh, just you know, you talk about a young man that's been just so consistent, um, has done whatever we ask him to do to, to go play linebacker uh, last year for for as much as he did. I, I think speaks volumes, but he's just. You know, he's been one of John's core guys, you know, just since, since the day he arrived here. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely miss him this year. Josh. Uh, Mike, Josh Holantino, Lone Star Live. Uh, CD popped up uh, today with a foot. Did he sustain that uh, during the game? And, and also, was there any concern? Uh, yes, uh, but he practiced today. So, but uh, I think he'll be okay. Yeah. And then uh, just to follow up to the, the last question, um, with you know John's response uh, being up here, just uh, I guess could you uh, list like a couple traits uh, of just like how he's able to uh, connect with players? Because like you know that felt like a pretty rare uh, moment for him to kind of reflect on you know what Marquise. Uh, oh yeah, I mean you know, John Fossil's an, an outstanding human being. Number one, um, you know he he lives it, grew up in this profession, uh, so he he knows you know on a personal level from you know every angle you know you look at the experience of you know his father you know, who's an outstanding coach in this league and you know in all the different generations of players that he's been exposed to so uh, John does a great job connecting and, and you know and like I said you know Marquise has been one of his key guys since the day he arrived here I mean he, 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 that young man has played a lot of hard nose tough football for us and um, you know obviously it's it's very important to John Clarence Getting back to uh, the uh, uh, Washington D.C. for a minute, you had him in, in uh, Green Bay. Uh, 
I know it's a competitive thing. Do you feel good about the success he's had? And can you talk about was there any consideration of having Joe with ha- having him at the DC here? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll say this about Joe. I, I think Joe's an outstanding football coach. Um, um, I'm proud of him. I, I am looking forward to competing against him. I think, like all of us in this league, you you look forward to these opportunities. But this is long overdue for Joe. Uh, and Joe's been ready for quite some time. I, I know there's been times in our time together in Green Bay and even here where you know he he was that guy. And um, and you know, regardless of you know how things happen and. Um, he, he's he's doing a great job with his opportunity, and I, I think like all of us, you know, sometimes you you have to most of the time, frankly, you have to wait longer than you you probably feel like you need to do. And and I, know, I just know you know my personal experience. You know, when I look back, I thought I was ready for things that now I sit here and I was a head coach that I, I really probably wasn't. But he's been ready for this opportunity for quite some time, and I think it clearly shows uh, just just the, with the way you know his his defense is playing in year one. So um, and like. Like I said, I, I think like all of us, we're looking forward to competing against one another. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for Joe. Uh, he, he's he's earned this. Uh, he's gone about it the right way for a long time. You know, he's he's, he's been an excellent coach in this league. Um, shoot, you know, I'm gonna say I hired him back in was that 2009, you know, through 2008. So, um, and you know, and I, and I think you're seeing the fruits of that of that that path that he's taken. Uh, it's definitely showing. Uh, we talked about Dak for a little bit and uh, being up in the booth. Will he go on road trips or is that just too hard for him to get around? No, that's a good question. I, I, I don't know that, for example. I, I would think so, uh, but I'm not sure about the, you know, the travel you know, with, with, um, with the surgery and how close to the surgery. Uh, that's a good question.